Okay, so I'd like to talk about Star Wars Squadrons. And uh, man, let me tell you, game already came out really fast, out of nowhere, as expected. October rolled around super quick, and Star Wars Squadrons finally dropped. And of course, Star Wars Squadrons is the $40 flight simulator game that EA is putting out. Um, you know, no, they're pretty clear cut about it. It's a relatively uh, short campaign. You have a full multiplayer mode. It is the definitive Star Wars Starfighter simulator experience. And I pre-ordered it uh, last minute, pre-installed it. Um, you know, got started with the prologue. And let me tell you, uh, the, the game opens like a little too similarly to another game. For me i don't want to spoil it for anyone who has not uh, played squadrons yet but uh man now the one thing that i actually do appreciate is kind of going back to what i was just saying how the game is as advertised it of course was made quicker than your average triple a game i mean this game is, is so singularly focused on it being a starfighter simulator that you have no way of walking around the insides of the cruisers in between missions. You're literally stuck in place looking at people and when you click on them, there's a fade in and fade out. That's how strictly, you know, Starfighter based the game is. They don't even let you be the person that you're playing as, which is just like, you know, nameless pilot number one and two for, you know, the New Republic and then uh, and the Empire, they let you choose the face model and the voice, and it's kind of cool. So, I think it's it's really great, you know, it, it definitely does get a little bit repetitive. Um, I do like all the new Starfighter mechanics that they added with, you know, lock-on and how you can manage your power and, and redirect power to uh, whether it be your engines, your lasers, um, or your shields to further enhance, you know, whichever part of your ship you need in that moment. I mean, you can you can control whether your shields are stronger on the front or on the back. Um, you can direct your squad to attack a target or defend one or give you like a, a, a re, uh, you know, like ammunition resupply drop. So there are a lot of things going on in the moment. Um, a lot of different mechanics to remember. It, it definitely took a little bit of getting used to and I still suck at it. Um, and, you know, even though I feel kind of overwhelmed by all the new mechanics that the game presents when you're inside the cockpit, I, I actually wish there was a bit more in the way of evasive maneuvers, because that I feel is a little bit limiting. Like when you're trying to dodge missiles or you're trying to get away, um, you really can't do anything too drastic beyond drifting, which is kind of difficult to do. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of wish that there was maybe like a multi-button sequence that would allow you to um, pull off some crazy move to shake, um, you know, a tail or shake missiles. And um, yeah, so you might be wondering, by the way, why I'm squinting so much. Uh, these glasses that I'm wearing, they are my prescription glasses and I don't have uh, shaders clip-ons for when I'm inside the car. So when the sun is blaring down like this, I, I'm, gen I'm generally kind of screwed. Um, and this is kind of how it always is for me and I'm just squinting all the time. I really need to get clip-ons um, and yeah, so I can't really wear sunglasses obviously because those wouldn't be prescription. So uh, my, my whole glasses situation is, is all over the place. Regardless, um, one thing I am really appreciating about the game thus far is the story is already better than Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2's story was a shallow, lifeless tour around the galaxy after Return of the Jedi, and it was the writers just being like, oh look, we read all the new canon books and, and comics, and we know how to make Star Wars. If we show you what's going on already as established in the books and comics already, but in our game, you guys will be distracted by the fact that there's no actual decent storyline going on. Or the storyline and characters are garbage in comparison to the prelude novel that was released uh, before Battlefront 2 came out. And I'm just really nerding out at this point. But yeah, the story is better. It's it's more natural, it's more organic in, in the way it shows the Empire fracturing and the infighting 
um, amongst themselves after Return of the Jedi. You know, they're not cooperating with each other. They're going against orders of their officials. Um, they're having, you know, some slight doubts about the decisions the Emperor made when the Galactic Civil War was first breaking out, like dissolving the Senate, for instance, and therefore th there was no leadership once he was dead, which of course was by design and he wanted it that way, Palpatine. But, um, you know, all that stuff is addressed in there. You've got James Arnold Taylor back in there voicing another Trandoshan again, which is really cool. Um, he's great. You've got Vanessa Marshall in there playing Hera very, very briefly. I mean, I'm like heading for a mission eight in the campaign and I still haven't seen her like fully enter the picture, only a hologram. So um, she can't be in it too much from what I gather, but I'm looking forward to that. And you know, you got Ray Sloan in there, which is cool. A um, little bit of a generic performance from the person playing her. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if they wind up recasting Ray Sloan at some point for a future Star Wars project. Regardless, um, the story is good. It's, it's halfway decent. And you know, this is a $40 Star Wars Starfighter simulator that EA kicked out the door. And so long as it's exactly that, and they have clearly pretty much advertised it as that, a smaller game, then I am okay with it. And you know, I just wanted a halfway decent story. And so far, the game is delivering on those two things, halfway decent story, good Starfighter simulator, and I'm enjoying it. It's it's not amazing, it's, it's not the greatest Star Wars game ever released, um, but it does satisfy a very specific niche of players who really just wanna be in the cockpit, and maybe if they have a VR headset, experience it from that uh, perspective. But this is actually an idea that I had when playing Battlefront 2, because you know, I would be um, in the cockpit, first person, it was really cool, and I was like, man, how awesome would it be if, if I was playing this match and we were all forced to look from a first person perspective, you know, inside out from the cockpit exclusively to have the most realistic and immersive experience for pretty much everyone. So I think that um, Squadrons is exactly that and it's delivering on, on the very low bar that I set for it and I'm, I'm enjoying it, man. And I'm excited to wrap up the last four missions and, um, you know, check out the multiplayer. So that is my uh, not so brief review of Star Wars Squadrons. I hope that uh, come 2021 or two, EA is able to put out a more uh, complete Star Wars game because obviously this one was definitely pretty rushed, uh, but that's okay. Like I said, Squadrons serves its purpose.